Hey guys, welcome back. Like always, this is Dave. Germany just won the World Cup and I'm pumped. So that means we're going to be doing an under slash over applied overhead tutorial. Oh yeah. So we're going to left, we're going to start where we left off last time when we were talking about the predetermined overhead and then we kind of transitioned into overhead applied or applied overhead. And now we're going to look as to what to do with this under or over applied overhead. Because if you remember from last tutorial, we had normal costing and we also looked at actual costing. And what were the differences again? Well, the differences were that the direct materials and direct labor were actual costs for normal, but the manufacturing overhead was actually estimated. It was a budgeted amount, while the actual costing, all three were actual costs. So why would we ever do normal costing when we can just use the actual cost? Well, if we want relevant and timely information, we need to make estimates so that we can actually use them within our company to plan and execute decisions. So we're normally always going to be making or using a normal costing system. Maybe that's why they even called it a normal costing system because we're normally going to have to use it, which means that we're normally going to have an under or over applied amounts because of course estimates aren't perfect and in order for them to match actual costs you have to be really good or be able to read the future and I'm pretty sure no one's that good at making estimates. So in this case if our estimates or our manufacturing overhead estimates are actually greater than our actual or incurred amounts of manufacturing overhead, you're going to see that we have an over applied amount of overhead. And if our estimate or budgeted overhead is less than our actual, you're going to see an under applied amount. I'm just trying to finish drawing off my eyes. So let's go over an example we used I think two or three tutorials ago when we were looking at a cost of goods manufactured statement. So what we did was we reported the incurred and then we reported the applied journal entries for essentially reporting the overhead. So let's go ahead and actually first start off with the incurred because that's what we started off with last time. So we debited the overhead control account. And if you remember, it was $400,000. And then we credited cash or accounts payable to actually pay for these costs, which was $400,000 as well in order for them to balance. And of course, this is the incurred, which I was just saying, oh, I have it over there on the side too. Okay, that's really redundant. Oh, well, uh, work in process was debited when we looked at the applied transaction. So this is our estimate or our budgeted overhead. So we debited work in process for our estimated amount, which was 350,000. And then we credited overhead control for the same amount, 350,000. And if you have any questions regarding how we actually performed or debited or credited any of these accounts, you can just go back to that tutorial where we explain the journal entries. And if you were to look at a T account for the overhead control accounts, the first one would be a clearly a debit, a $400,000 debit, while the second one we'd be crediting for 350,000, which means that we have a balance of $50,000 in the debit category. So this is the balance. And since there's a difference of $50,000 difference, that means, or since our estimate is actually lower than our actuals, what does that mean? That means that we're going to have an under applied amount of overhead since we did not apply enough overhead. So because of that, our work in process is going to be less than it actually should be because of course if we only debited 350,000 when it should be 400,000 it's going to be understated because of that our inventory will also be understated and 
our cost of goods sold will also be understated, which gives you an idea as to what we might adjust in the next part. So the next part is actually the adjustment. So let's go ahead and actually go and figure out how we're going to adjust for the under or over applied amount. So the first case is we're going, it's pretty simple actually, we're just going to write right off the difference. So I have a little explanation here and it says that if the ending inventory is low and it makes no sense to capitalize the under slash over applied since most inventory has been sold. I kind of read that really awkwardly. Uh, but yeah, if our ending inventory is low, we're not gonna wanna capitalize the under overhead applied because it just doesn't make sense to capitalize it to other accounts like work in process or finished goods. Uh, so we're just going to write it off as cost of goods sold. And I even have a second explanation. So if the under or over applied uh, or we wouldn't, or we'd write it off if the under over applied doesn't qualify as an asset, which is why we expense. Wow, I can't talk today. Uh, so in this case, the under over applied is an inefficiency. So we didn't actually budget the right amount of overhead. And because it's an inefficiency, it doesn't really qualify as an asset. So we shouldn't really be capitalizing any assets. So that's one of the arguments behind writing it off and because it's an inefficiency it's a cost or a cost of our business which means we have to expense it so in this case the first alternative is to just debit cost of goods sold that way we bring the cost of goods sold back up to what it should be because it was understated by 50,000 and we're going to credit the other account that is understated at the moment which is the overhead control amounts. And if you're thinking, oh, the work in process and finished goods are also understated, as you saw in the previous one, well, uh, debiting the cost of goods sold uh, actually just attributes all of that, that under or over applied amount to cost of goods sold rather than prorating it, which is actually the next method. So this is the simple method, just writing it off very quickly to cost of goods sold. So this was for under applied. I should say if it's over applied, you're gonna do the exact opposite. You're going to debit overhead control and credit cost of goods sold. So that's if it's over applied. In this case, it was under applied. Let's go over what's gonna happen in our second option. So the second option is if we decide to prorate it. And we're going to be prorating the the cost or the fifty thousand dollars of underapplied if the finished goods and work in process are significant and the overhead amount is material. So if the overhead amount is actually large enough to make an or to make an effect on users' decision making, then of course we're going to prorate it among finished goods and work in process. Also, if the balance of the accounts are significant. So if we haven't sold everything, that's what I mean. So significant and material. I should probably underline things as I go to clear that up. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be allocating the cost of goods sold, or actually I should say the, the under or over applied amount to cost of goods sold, work in process, and finished goods. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the balance of each account and I'm getting them from the video that was I think two before this one and I'm going to divide it by total cost of goods sold since that is going to be the largest amount. And for the first one we can actually calculate what are we going to do first? We're going to do finished goods first. That's what I have written down here. So finished goods, uh, the balance was 500,000 in that account. And then we're gonna divide it by the total cost of goods sold amount. So you can see that 33% or 33.333, whatever, repeating uh, of the $50,000 under applied is actually going to go to 
to the finished goods. So I'm not actually sure what that is. I didn't have that. I oddly did not calculate that. So I'm going to multiply that, and it's going to be 16667. So 16667 for finished goods. So we're debiting that amount. So that's for finished goods. 33% of the 50,000 will be prorated to the finished goods. For work in process, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the balance, which was $165,000 divided by 1.5 million. That's actually going to be 11% of the 50,000. So that's going to be something like maybe 5,500. Uh, 0.11 times 5,000 or 50,000 is 5,500. So work in process 5,500. And finally, the last one will be prorating uh, the remaining cost of goods sold. So what we're doing is uh, for the cost of goods sold balance, we're not going to take uh, the one. 0.5 million because we've already prorated a certain amount of finished goods in work in process. So we're going to subtract uh, the balances in finished goods and work in process. So balance in finished goods and balance in work in process to get our cost of goods sold balance. And then we'll divide that by the total cost of goods sold. So in this case, when we subtract those balances, we're going to get $835,000. We're going to divide that by the, the before amount of cost of goods sold, which was 1.5 million. Of course, all these numbers are in the cost of goods manufactured video and journal entry video. And then we'll multiply that by 50,000 so that we prorate that amount. And that will actually equal, I think it's Actually, I have no idea what that is, so I'm going to calculate it. And that's going to be 27,833. So cost of goods sold is going to be, I totally just forgot, 27,833. And we're going to be crediting the overhead control. And that way, we've prorated the 50000 not just towards the cost of goods sold, but also the work in process and finished goods because of this reason over on the right-hand side. So those were the two options. You can either write off the under or over applied amounts, or you can prorate it. So hopefully you understood that. Any questions you have, make sure to leave them in the comment section below because, of course, this part was kind of complex. And... I think that's all I have for you at this moment. So I'll see you guys in the, oh, one last thing, one last thing. If, of course, this was uh, not under applied and it was over applied, we would just reverse it. So we would debit overhead control and credit finished goods, credit work in process, credit cost of goods sold. So we did the entries for under applied. If it was over applied, it would just be the opposite. All right, that's it for now. See you guys. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any of the material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.